All right, so we're here in Yip, Belgium, or Yper in Dutch, and we're just walking to the main square now. And um, in a couple of hours, we're going on a tour of um, Flanders Fields and the War Cemetery. Yeah, and there's stuff associated with that. Yes, associated with the First World War. So we're really excited to see all that stuff because uh, Canada was very involved in the um, First World War in the battles that were in Deep, uh, one of them being Pashdale. So we're very excited to learn a bit more about that. It should be a great day. It was like a great day. It's not very sunny out today, but it's a bit chilly as well. Yeah, but, but I, I feel it, like it's a bit of like pathetic fallacy, you know? Like yeah. The weather mirrors the mood of the tour we're going on. Yeah, so exactly. perfect. I yeah. think if it was sunny, it would be not as be a little dramatic. Or yeah. Like not as effective and emotional. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, um, sounds like we're gonna have a great day. So, uh, we'll see you later. So this is the main square in Eep. There's like a parking lot here. Um, the clock tower is currently singing. We're not quite sure what this building is exactly. Um, I think it could be some sort of like town hall or um, maybe it's even a church. We do know that the In Flanders Field Museum is in there and we went in there. It was very nice. They had a lot of artifacts and um, a lot of stories of people that, that died in Eve during the First World War. So that was really nice to see. Um, and Eep, like I said before, is very small town feel. It's pretty quiet. There's a lot of locals. There's not too many tourists, which is nice. So right now we're just waiting for the bus to come pick us up for our tour. It's a little chilly out, but I think we'll survive it. And you're going to see the signpost there to the left. It says Langemark, and that's where the Germans were. In 1914, the troops present here was a mix of British and French troops. Starting from March 1915, all the French were gradually replaced with British troops and the French went back to their own country. That had happened all over the salient by April, except here, because in this sector we still had the 87th Territorial and the 45th Algerian Division of the French Army, because also the French came with their colonial troops from the north of Africa. Moroccans, Algerians, Senegalese, Tunisians. So this was the trench line where now you have the industrial estate, the picture and continues to the left of the roads, the trench lines that started here. Hard to imagine, but now when the town decided to extend the industrial estate here, we have a society called the Diggers, that's an archaeologic society, and when they knew, knew that a new factory was going to be built, they have the old trench maps. And they came as first, they examined the site, sometimes they could find trenches back, they explored them, and then the factory was built on top. But in those trenches, they sometimes came across human remains. And in the whole of the extension of the industrial estate, 223 remains have already been discovered, right here, in this site. And I have a picture of one of them here, I'm going to hand it back again. So that man, when he found him, a rather intact remain, he still has the helmet on the skull, in between the bones of his hand, the rifle, the bandolier, the spade and the boots. So the small picture underneath shows when the man had to climb over the top, like this one, he must have come out, immediately been shot and he fell back with bended knees in the trench line. That's 1917. But in 1917, the war moved five miles to the east, so these became forgotten battlefields. So, when trenches were not maintained due to side pressure, they collapsed, overgrown with grass and weed. So it's only 80 years later that 
this remain was uh, discovered. He was not identified. So the road ahead to Langemark, I'm impressed with the tape of the night, the tape is long, it's pretty good. It's only one tide on top, two tide going in. The entrance is to the back, because that's where the Allies were. If an Allied shell came down and fell in front of the entrance, it would mean the destruction of the children to the entrance to the back. So the German defensive line in the First World War would have been where these stones are. And now they're to, there to commemorate different soldiers that fought in the war and died. But they wanted to represent the defensive line that they had during the First World War. This Vancouver corner is the Canadian War Memorial just outside of Eve, honoring all the Canadians that fought in the First World War in Belgium, including Passchendaele, Eve, the gas attacks by the Germans. So this is modern Passchendaele, and the church or the ruins of that same church was what the soldiers saw when they got into the village. to the Somme battle in 16 and then he fought here in the third battle where he finally then was killed but he saw all the terrible action from Gallipoli to the Somme up to Passchendaele so and he's buried just over there. Where is he buried? So sometimes it's really dangerous for farmers to farm here because they find Holes in munitions kind of live, and when they find it, they just leave it at the side of the road. So here's one that was found and left at the side of the road. Where are we going now? So we're going into a Canadian trench that was used in the battle. Um, I'm not sure which battle, but... Sanctuary Wood, which okay. is where we are, I think, is what she said. During the First World During War. During the First World War, and this is a preserved... This is actually the real deal. This is what it was like. This is a real trench that they use, and it's been preserved and, and visited ever since 1920. You can see how wide I am, and how tall it is. Yeah, so you're about 5'2", and yeah. so it's short of that. Yeah. And the reason it's in a zigzag is so that if a shell were to enter into the trench, it wouldn't blow up the whole trench, it would just blow up that one section. So if it were to land here, it would blow up this section, but not the rest of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's really to, to protect the, the soldiers, I mean... Oh, and this must have been where they would fire the weapons through. Wow. Words can't really explain uh, this. I don't think we'll ever get to see something like this. And you have to keep, keep in mind too that like they wouldn't have had this wood at the bottom originally. Yeah, it would have just been all mud. Mud and water. Mud and water, yeah. Yeah, so like I mean, feet, probably, right? probably like 10 to 15 feet away, not very far at all. I mean, there's there's five or six just you know meters away from each other. Yeah. And again, Heather's about five feet, and it's at least halfway down. So, yeah, like I mean, it, yeah, if if we were anywhere near this. And how wide is it? Probably about well, like two to three meters wide. 
all the way around. The I can't reach. So. Yeah, so. My leg and arm span is. I mean, I still can reach quite. Yeah, I would say even three meters wide all the way around. Just so you can understand how big, big this is. Yeah. And this isn't even the biggest one. No, definitely not. It's really hard to understand uh, this place without actually being here. So this is Chantal entering the trench. This part of the trench appears to be a bit deeper. I'm sure that those steps were probably added just so that people would be able to go in. Yeah, so I mean... It's as tall as me. I'm about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, and it's as tall as me. I'm sure they duck most of the time as well, obviously, and look over, because, I mean, the soldiers back then were also really small, so they were probably about my height or a little shorter. And if we keep walking, even this side, I mean, it's probably just been destroyed over the years, but this side isn't very high either. And I think it's very... Uh, kind of fitting, the kind of day it is, it's really cold, it's, it's damp in here, it's really muddy, it really just makes you feel like how they felt back then, and how harsh the battles were because of the conditions, and sometimes they had to get their legs amputated because of the infections they get and the conditions in the trenches, and it makes you think a little bit of, of what the Canadians and all the soldiers, the hundreds of thousands of soldiers that died and lost their lives in uh, World War One and all the other wars that have happened after World War One. Okay, so we are at the end of our day here in Ypres, Belgium, and uh, just some final thoughts. Yeah, I think there's really no words for the destruction that was here. I mean. You'll see from all of the videos, there were beautiful, beautiful city that was completely destroyed and um, lots of lives lost, obviously, which you will see as have, will have seen as well. Um, and I just think we definitely really appreciated it a lot more than we thought we would, even though we knew we would really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, personally, I feel really, I think I need some time to digest, actually. I don't really have any, I can't really explain how it made me feel. Yeah. I'm, at one point, actually, Chantel said she got goosebumps, and I think that was really, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I yeah. think that was a really good expression of how, even though this is something that happened 100 years ago, we can't really have any personal connection to it. It still impacts us to this day, because we know that there were people that were fighting this war that were our age, or some of them even younger. There was yeah. um, lieutenants and sergeants who were 22 years old who were killed for us to be able to have the freedom to come and see things like this nowadays. Yeah, and it just really makes you think about the sacrifices they made. And, and now looking back, like Heather said, 100 years ago, and they had to rebuild all of this town from nothing. And I think it's an incredible thing to be here today, 100 years later, and say, wow, like, look what we've done, and I think it's just incredible. Like like you said, no words for, for today. Um, so we're very appreciative for the day, and um, I'll put the, the link at the bottom of the video of the tour that we took in it case amazing. you're interested. It was amazing. Highly recommended. Yes, highly, Christine highly recommended. was absolutely amazing, like, incredibly knowledgeable, um, took all of our questions, took us to other cemeteries that we weren't expecting to go to because of the diverse group we had. We had some New Zealanders, um, some English, some Welsh in our group, so she accommodated to all of that, uh, and it was, it was incredible. It was fantastic. Yeah, so um, just to point out in the background, um, the gate, and on the inside it actually has um, hundred, like thousands of names of people that fought in the First World War. I think she said something like 35,000 or something. Names, yeah, I yeah. mean, Canadian and every regiment, necessarily. Oh, it was, yeah, it's pretty incredible. So. And those are the names of all the soldiers who died, and they either, their bodies weren't found, or they're not sure where they're buried. Yeah. Thank you for watching, and uh, we will see you